Perfect. Uh, I think we're going to get started. I see all the names are now filled in. So I want to welcome everyone today to our um, SH Intact dashboard training here by Ethos Systems. Um, it is my honor to have um, Shannon from our team. Shannon is one of our Sage Intact senior consultants. Um, been honored to be working with her for many, many years. And um, she's going to she spend a lot of time putting this presentation together. So excited for her to present that. Uh, before I turn it over to her, just a couple few logistics. Uh, Shannon, can you advance the slide one for me? Perfect. Um, the presentation should be about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, somewhere in that range. Um, um, kind of just depends upon a lot of the Q&A and questions that we get along the way. Unfortunately, the phone lines are muted just to make sure there's no background noise. So um, if you have any questions, please use the questions feature within the GoToWebinar. Um, and if you want to copy this PowerPoint at the end, just let me know. Um, put, just send your, put your email address in there and um, I will make sure you get a copy of the PowerPoint when it's done. Last slide before I turn it over to her, we do have our end of the year schedule uh, for webinars um, planned. I uh, want to thank those clients who have spent time uh, recommending um, recommending um, topics. Uh, the, first, the one that's going to be in October is on the new WIP management feature that Sage released. That, will be, um, that webinar will be done by Olivia on our team. Um, and um, a couple of clients have asked for it and we felt like it was really important to get that scheduled for October 10th. Um, we do have the R4 release on November 7th and then we do have our year-end um, webinar, can't believe we're at the end of the year already, um, that goes over year-end processing and all of the tips and tricks regarding that. But so without any further ado, I want to turn this over to Shannon and have her start talking about dashboards and training. Thank you. All right, thanks Stuart. Hi everybody, I'm gonna go through dashboard training today. There's a lot to it, so we're gonna go a little bit quick. Um, but here's today's agenda. We're gonna go through why dashboards, the benefits of dashboards, some design considerations that you may wanna consider before creating a dashboard. Um, the dashboard property settings. This one we'll go through, but we'll also jump into Sage Intact and look at the properties, the different types of components, then there's also general components, which a lot are listed within general components. So the, I've separated those into two. Um, and then we'll go into some examples. And at the end, we'll have time for any questions. Okay, so why dashboards? If you guys are not making use of dashboards today, I strongly encourage you to do that. There are so many benefits that can come from dashboards. One of the things I think everyone would like to see is saving time, go home earlier, see all your reports in one page. Um, you can go, you can view, you can add reports, add different components, and then you can have all the information you need on one page versus running a bunch of different reports. Um, you can visualize, it helps you visualize data. You have different, different pieces to the puzzle. You can either view from a high level or from a detailed level. So if you're making a dashboard for maybe you need leadership, they don't wanna see all the details, you can do that for them or you can even make your own dashboard. You can create a dashboard for different roles. So just like you could do for leadership, maybe you wanna do a dashboard for AP or for AR. And the best part, I think, is you can customize one for yourself. So if you are always looking at the same report, same things, you can make your own dashboard. You can make it private to you um, as you guys are going through and checking to see what you want on your dashboard. I would just encourage you, make it private, go play with it, try it out. That's really the best way to learn. Okay, so some design considerations before you get started. You wanna think about what the purpose of your dashboard is. Is this to show data? Is this to look at things from a high level? Are you trying to have all your reports on one page? What is the goal of the dashboard? Um, the next is who is your audience? I covered that on the last slide. What content is needed? Are you wanting to see actual financial reports? Are you wanting to see project data? Think about what content is needed before you start. And who should have permissions? So you can limit it to just you. You can limit it to certain groups. If you want everyone to be able to see, you can show everyone. 
Um, one thing is to employ users. I get this question a lot. Employ users can view a dashboard. So all users are able to actually view the dashboard. They just may not be able to create. Okay, we're going to go through this slide a little bit quick because I'm going to show you in the system. These are all the different settings per dashboard. So you can add different components. You can make it two or three columns. You can make it a custom color. You can group them. So some people will group them according to roles, group them according to purpose. And I'll show you that as well. You can make the dashboard your homepage by setting it as your default. And then each component within the dashboard has filters, but you can also set filters for the dashboard itself. And then again, permissions. Okay, so for the different component types, these are all the different types of components you can add on your dashboard. So each one of these is different and is added with different fields and in a different way. So charts are going to be your graphs. They can be financial graphs or they can be memorized. Um, general, we're going to go through on the next slide. Performance cards are a single value. They're based on account groups. If you guys have custom account groups because you want to see a certain number, you can do that as well. You can compare that number to a previous, if you want to compare it to the previous quarter, a previous year, whatever you want to compare that number to. Um, your record is going to be a list view. This is not going to be drillable. You're just going to see a list view that you would look at, so a single record. So if you're looking at maybe you want your employee list or you want your project list, that's going to be a record. The reports, you can do financial, standard, custom, ICRW reports. And all the reports have drill down details. So if you want to go into a report and see, even go to the, the ledger to see what that number consists of, you can do that as well. Um, one thing to note is that if it's not a financial report, you have to memorize it in order for it to be able to be added to a dashboard. Um, smart links, they're a list of links or content from a web page and collaboration feed. So if you guys are not using Collaborate, once again, strongly encourage you to do it. Collaborate is like an internal communication within Sage Intact. Super helpful. You can go to a vendor, say what's, you know, we need something new on this vendor or update an address and actually send that to somebody within your company. And they can get an email, a notification that you've notified them. Um, I can show you this later, but this is also, you can add this feed onto the dashboard. So you can see everything that, that if someone's tagged you in something or if you've tagged them. Okay, these are the general components. I separated these out because there are a lot of them. I'm not gonna go through these too much right now because I'm gonna show you guys in Sage Intact in a minute. Basically, the applications is the list of applications which you have access for. The attachment container provides a link directly to an attachment that contains one or more documents. The billboard displays text that's entered when you create the component. So you can go in and decide what the billboard's gonna see. Maybe you want announcements. The calendar is just a calendar. The close through summary shows the dates for which the books were closed. And you can do this uh, um, by entity as well. Custom navigation allows you to, per, it does the links directly from the dashboard into the Sage Intact menus. Your entities, that will just let you navigate to an entity. And your main shortcuts, those are just convenient links that can take you directly to a page. Your message board is gonna show what is listed in company, admin, more company messages. So if you have any message there in your company settings, that's what's going to show there. Um, new features, it's going to show what the new features are of Sage Intact. That's also on your homepage. News and events, you can link to RSS. It enables you to include content from popular news sources as well. 
Um, your report shortcuts. These display links to different reports. They're already set, so you can just add the component report shortcuts and it will list all the main reports. And your resources displays the links to help community and other resources. I know I'm going through this kind of quickly because I want to get into Sage and talk to show you guys how these apply. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into Intact. And we can see your screen perfectly. Awesome, thanks. So what I've done is I've created a dashboard group here. So you'll notice that there's dashboards by role. That's because I've created a group. So if you guys just have maybe six dashboards or so, you may not need to create groups. But if you have, you know, I've seen some clients, they have 20 different dashboards or maybe every single person has created a dashboard. It just can junk up the menu. So I prefer to put them into groups. So for today's, I did dashboard training and I broke them into all components and then the general components. And there's one of each. So we're gonna start with all components. I would say most people use a mix of all components and general components, but all components are really, what's here is really what you see, I would say most frequently on dashboards. Okay, so for the purpose of this training, I did, I titled what the component is in front of the title so that you know what type of component you're looking at. This is gonna be a chart this is just the revenue trends monthly. You can come in here, change the color, change it for, to bar, change it to line, whatever you want to show. Um, actually, you know what? Let me go through the dashboard settings first of this whole dashboard. So this is one dashboard. Each one of these is a component. You'll notice within the dashboard here, there's settings, and there's also settings within each component. So up here, I've created these filters because that's what I wanna filter by when I come to this dashboard. So if I come in here and I filter, let's just say by this location, I can apply that and it's gonna filter all my components as well. I'm gonna clear that out though for now. Um, your dashboard can have up to three different filters. So the way you set those filters up is going to the settings here. So this is that slide where I talked about, these are all your options for the entire dashboard itself. This is the title of the dashboard, the description. Uh, two or three columns is what I suggest. If it is a dashboard that just has all reports, you may wanna do one, so that you don't have to scroll to the side. Um, your flexible width column, you can say where you, where you want it to be, if you want it left or right. The color, um, a lot of people love this. Uh, you can go in and create a custom color. I'm actually gonna change it to green, but I don't want it to be like a bright green. So I can go in here and do, just change it to a green change it to whatever you want. You can do hot pink, black, white, whatever you want. Now this group is how I showed you guys how you group the different, so how I had general components and then all components and I grouped them into dashboard training. So each one of these, these are the different groups I have on the page. If you just want to list out the dashboard itself, you can as well. But I've grouped this into dashboard training. So your filters, I always do an as of date. I think it's just convenient. This does not count as one of the three filters. These are the filters that you can choose from. And you'll notice that these are grayed out because I, I've already selected three. But if I unselect one, I can select another one here too. So for permissions, you can either allow access to everyone, you can deny access to everyone, you can allow to just certain users, or if you just want, you can add people as you go. So just know if there's some, maybe you're 
displaying financial reports you don't want certain users to see you can go and deny access to everyone and only allow certain people all right i'm um, got here um, you can create a new dashboard or, or a new component from here you can clone a dashboard so if i like this dashboard and i want to clone this and then create a new one it's kind of like the way you duplicate a report you can clone the whole dashboard and create it based off of this you can also print a dashboard okay so now we'll go into each one of the components so you'll notice that there's settings here but there's also settings on each component so what you do click in here and you can come in and change the component here um, one of the things I found, if you have another, this is a refresh button. If you guys are doing things in another screen and you're changing, maybe entering entries and you want, this isn't automatically going to refresh unless you went out of the page and went back onto it. So if I have Sage Intact open on my other screen, I just made an entry. I want to see that actually for a graph, I probably wouldn't do it, but for um, something like a report and you want to see it show up then you just hit this little refresh button. If you wanna actually edit where it's coming from, so this is a report, you wanna edit the report itself. This isn't editing the component, it's going into the report to edit it, you can do that as well. If you realize, hey, I just don't need this, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it, you can delete the components too. Okay, so performance cards. These are based off of account groups. And if there's, if there's not an account group for the number you wanna see, you can create a custom account group. So each performance card, let's go into settings real quick. You can see the account group that it's pulling from. Here you can compare to different quarters, different months, whatever you, you wanna compare it to, or you don't have to compare it to anything. I like to compare it because you can see the change and then you can also do, um, you can see either percent or number change. So here's the percent, but uh, see this one is a number. So each one of these is a different account group. The arrows are showing, you can change it to whether it's red or green. So revenue went up, so that's good, but we don't want our AP going up, so that's red. All right, financial reports. So if you remember before, I said you either have to have a financial report or a memorized report. So if you go in to choose a report and you don't see it here and available, that's because you need to go to memorized. So right now I have a financial report, but if you wanna to go to a memorized report, then you'll see that too. These are all my memorized reports. So if you don't see it in financial reports, check memorized report. So this is the report I created for it's just the 12 months PL. You'll notice here that see all these numbers are blue. That means I can drill down into the activity from the report. So I can go into the actual GL and see the numbers here. And as you guys know, you can further drill down into each number as you go. I find that most people want this because they wanna just be able to see all of their data on one page and then drill down as needed. But this gives you a high level with access to detailed level as well. And um, for- Chandler, there, was, there was a couple questions that came in. Oh. Thought it would be, so I apologize. I wanted to make sure we. The first question is, how do you memorize? I mean, how do you memorize a report? When you're going to a report, so you can go into. Um, let's just duplicate this. So if you're going to run a report, there's a. Actually, we'll we'll stick to this. But when you run a report, there is a button that says memorize, and you can memorize that report. Financial reports you can just add, but if you're running any other report, there's a button usually in the right-hand corner that says Memorize. Perfect. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, there was another question that came in. I think I understand this one. It says, how do I get separate columns 
based upon different properties. I'm assuming they're talking about financial reports and, and basically under that, that would just basically be using the, in the financial report writer, setting up the expand by dimension feature. Try, and I think that's what you're trying to accomplish on that one. I think those were the two. Oh, that was it. So, yep, those were the two questions that, that you answered them both. Thank you. Okay, perfect. All right. So, we, um, I'll come back to this report. I don't want, notice how there's a scroll bar. I don't want to keep scrolling. So, what you can do is if you want something to expand across the whole screen, you move it up to the middle. So, notice that th this is two columns right now, the whole dashboard but you still have the availability to move things up to the top and spread it across the whole dashboard. So for something like this, that's a 12 month report. I don't wanna keep scrolling. I, I can move that up to the top. Um, next, this is just another example of another report. You can go in, drill down. And um, this was a report that was already made, financial report. All I did is add it to the dashboard. And it's really quite simple. When you're adding components, you just come in and go add, and you'll see you can either add a chart, performance card, record, report, and then it will give you the options that you need. And um, one thing to note is the height. So let's say I wanted this to be smaller because I don't need to see everything and I want to make it scrollable. I would go ahead and go into here and I could just I'm going to actually change the settings on this. And let's actually, I don't want an automatic height. Let's change this to 500, just so you can see the difference. So notice how the whole component now has more room. So if this was a, a longer report and you wanted to show more, you would just go change the height. All right, I'm gonna go over here to record. Notice that there's no, you can't drill down into these ones, but this is just that record, that list that you wanna see. Maybe you want a list of your projects, your vendors, your employees. This is that, what a record is. You can also, when you're creating it, you can go decide, you can filter it. You can decide which fields you wanna show in the columns. You could go, so for this one I did, okay, all outstanding bills. So you would then go in and say status equals to posted, it's not been paid. So you can change what's gonna appear here. This is an example of an ICRW report. Um, same thing, it has all the different settings. And the next is smart links click. So these, what I usually do, I'll actually put this at the top of a dashboard. So this is just an example for, I'll move it around. And as you can see, you can move different things around as well. I could even move, if I wanted to move oops, this performance card, I can move this over here. You can move all the components to where you want them. But for this one, this is just an easy way to, if I wanna see the mapping of integrations, I just randomly selected Procore, Service Trade, ADP. I wanna go to that page. I find it's convenient for people to have that available in case they forget. So I could just come here, select the link. It's actually gonna take me to that link on the, the link of the page. So it's just an easy way to get to that. So you can go in here, find everything you need super helpful for your users that are using different integrations you could have that all listed here you could have your banks all listed here whatever you think you would need you can do in smart link click um the smart link fetch i have not gotten this to work yet if anybody has used this and had it work let me know <laughs> i wanted to add it just so you see it is available but a lot of websites will present will prevent you from being able to do this so i just went and added one but you can see it's not going to connect so if you guys get that to work email me let me know but i found that a lot of websites will prevent you from doing this so i'm going to go ahead and delete that
Okay, the collaborate feed. So I collaboration is that tool I was talking about that you can communicate with people within Sage Intact. Make sure it's enabled. Um, if you don't know what it is, you can ask somebody, you can ask one of us to enable it and show you, but definitely try to start using it. It's just great to have. But I don't have anything here, so you're not gonna see it. I can't show you an example here. So before I move over to the general components, does anyone have any questions about any of these components that are here? Are there any questions, Stuart? Uh, no, we, I've been able to answer them behind the scenes, so we're all good. Okay, awesome. So you'll notice I can switch over to general components here because it's part of that group, but it also displays here in general components. Okay, so what this is, what all these components are here is that you, when you go to create a component and it says general, you have all of these options here. A lot of people don't know what they're for because they're if they don't know what they're for, they don't use them. So I figured I'd go through these and show you and explain what, what they are or show you some examples. I think that some can be used more than others and I'll go through that as well. Um, but the, you'll notice here, if I went to chart, it just gives you chart. If you went to report, it gives you an option for report. So general is unique in the sense that there's a lot of different components listed within the general component type. Okay, applications. This is just a list of your applications that you have access to. Ultimately, it's the same thing as what you see here, but it is all on one screen. So people may want to add that here instead of clicking up here. Um, the attachment container, this one only has one attachment, but if you had one attachment with multiple documents, one attachment container with multiple documents, they would all be listed here. So if it's something you need to open a lot of times, you could list that here. Uh, your billboard announcement. So I just did an example. You can make this company-wide, all timesheets are due. Whatever you want to add to the billboard will show on here. So if you want to change this, and so every time somebody logs in, this is here available for them to see. You can do that. You can make this bigger. You can put this at the top. It's basically just an announcement, a reminder, any messages that you want others to see. Um, I think these could be, these are beneficial. I don't really see the use of the calendar as much. You have a calendar here on your screen, but if you wanna have the calendar, you can add a calendar. Your close through summary, I think is very valuable to add to dashboards. You can see what, what month, what entity, what was closed, if, if just the sub ledgers were closed or if the entire entity was closed. Super helpful. You can see here, I did it by each entity. You can also just do, I'm gonna go into settings. You can also do a summary view that just shows you what, whether the actual ledger's been closed, what part's been closed versus breaking it out by summary. Um, your custom navigation will bring you into different parts that you can select within Sage Intact. So this would be, this will bring you to the approved timesheets page, the approved bills. It's a shortcut to different parts of Intact. I think this is super helpful to have for your daily activities. Um, you can also have your favorites if you wanna add them to favorites and create your own menu. But again, having everything in one place on the dashboard is super helpful. So if I clicked on here and went to approve timesheets, if there were timesheets to approve, it would bring me here. It, this is recurring transaction status report. You can see which ones, it will bring you to the report to see which ones failed, which ones were successful. Um, this is a list of your entities. I think you, I would say you have your list of entities here, but you also have the ability to add it here. I don't know how helpful this is because it's also right here, but up to you. 
um, your main shortcut. So this is a list. Uh, I didn't create this list. When you go in to add the component and you select main shortcuts, it gives you all of these shortcuts. And I think this is what Sage Intact knows is the most used. So it, it gives you that list within. So you're not going in, whereas here, you're going in and selecting what you want to see in custom navigation. And here, the difference is it's just giving you a list of everything they think you'll want to go to. So you go to print checks and it brings you to that screen. Just took me out of the dashboard, so I'm gonna go back. We had a couple questions that came in during this time too. If you want me to hit those or do you want to keep on going, it's up to you. Yeah, that's perfect. Go ahead. Perfect. So the first one is, is that do you have any sample dashboards you can send out or you know like you know do it and, and and there was another question that also came in it's like how do you come up how do you do, how do you come up with the design of the dashboard like how do you figure out what you want to put onto it so those were like samples and 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 um you know how do you come up with what you know your design of it yeah so that those are both good questions um, the dashboard, so there are certain dashboards that are installed within your system when you start. Um, I, I wouldn't, I don't know of any way to be able to send out dashboards to you, Stuart. Uh, no, not really. I mean, unless, there's, unless you're in a production, I mean, a test environment, so you can't yeah. set up. So a lot of them have been done for a production environment. So it's. What, because one, what? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the one feature we love we we've asked Sage multiple times is the ability to copy dashboards from one environment to another. They have not released that feature, have not developed that feature yet. So we're still waiting for that. That would be incredible. Um, one of the things you can do if you click on the main dashboard list or word, you'll get all your dashboard listed here. Um, and then you'll go to dashboards library. There could be some dashboards in here that may have not been installed because they don't apply to your business, but they may help like for, let's see if it was services or support, you can go in and install these and use those components and copy those if those help you. So just to make sure you have all of them, you just do install, um install and you can see use all these as an example so whatever is within like come to the dashboard go to dashboard library install all of these copy different components from these or use them as an example so that's probably your best go-to so when i go in here and i go even when i was creating this dashboard i went okay you know what let me see what different components I want to take from different dashboards for this training. So I went, oh, okay, that'd be great to have this performance card. Um, maybe you want your AP Trends Monthly. You can go get ideas from this, and then you can go into settings and see how it was set up, and then just on your other screen, set it up yourself to mirror this. Or you could clone the whole dashboard. Um, what was the other question, Stuart? Sorry. The other one that came in, is there any good way of publishing these out if they don't want to log into Intact? Is there any way of publishing these dashboards out? You could print them. Okay. But not that I'm aware of. Was it wasn't there another question in between? Nope, Sorry. you got it. You got them. Okay, perfect. All right. So we'll go back to dashboard training and the general components. All right, message board, I went over that earlier. That's in your company messages. New features, I don't really find this val valuable, but I wanted to select show you what it looks like because the only reason I don't find it valuable on your dashboard is because it's already on your home screen when you log in. So it's already there available, but if you wanted to have this on your dashboard, you could add that too. Um, news and events, I couldn't get one of these working, but that is a component that you can set up. Uh, report shortcut. So the, again, just like the, you have the customized menu over here and the main shortcuts are decided by Sage Intact of all the main shortcuts they think you might use. Same with reports. So it just lists out all the reports that 
they think that are valuable and that you might use. Your resources, these are also all on your homepage. So you'll, you can just do add resources. So the reason why I made this separate, uh, as I said, that there's a lot of different components, but it allows you to see. So if I go do resources, it doesn't have me choosing anything. It creates that same one. It creates that for me. So mean shortcuts, report shortcuts, and resources and new features, that's just there for you. So you're not going in and customizing anything. The rest of them you are. All right, so now if you want to log in and make a dashboard your homepage, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna select, I've got a dashboard called, let's see, Shannon's dashboard. I made it hot pink. You can do whatever you want. Stuart knows I like the color pink, so I did this just for myself. Um, I will go, if I wanted to make this dashboard my homepage, so right now when I click on home, my homepage looks like this. But I can go into my settings, my preferences, and go decide what I want that to be. So I want my start page. We'll make it the dashboard. I select Shannon's dashboard and save. And oh, I also need to make it default in the default dashboard. Give me a second. Just select it as default. There we go. So now when I go, if I went to, if you go to your homepage, it's sitting here now. Okay, so any, any other questions um, that come up, type them in now. I'm gonna show you a few different options and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So let's just go to the dashboards by role. Um, oh, I think one of the questions was, how do you figure out how to design or what to put on your dashboard? Um, that was one of the things I mentioned in the design considerations. So when clients ask me like, hey, we want dashboards to see your information, what I usually ask them is, who is it for? Are you doing it for your AP department? Are you doing it for your CEO? Are you making it for all your financials? Do you want this to just be a company dashboard with all the quick and easy links? Um, it really depends what you're making, it, who you're making it for and what you're trying to portray on that dashboard. So you'll just, when you're doing that, just think about what you want them to see. So I usually go in and I'll go, okay, every role should have a dashboard. AP can have a dashboard. It brings them to all their links, all their different things. This isn't set up completely with all of the possibilities that could be set up since it's a demo environment, but you can have your bills, you can have your payments, your checking accounts, whatever is involved for AP. Um, if you're going to CFO, you, probably just have a lot of high level reports and views. So you just wanna think about who is it for and what information you need to display. Um, I think it's helpful to have a company dashboard, things that people will always want to see. You can, that has, you know, your task, your reports, different things that people, like the whole company or maybe your whole department would wanna see. It just makes it easier. Um, the reason I, I like to do dashboards toward the end of my trainings because if you just go put everything on a dashboard for users to access, they don't always learn the ins and outs of Sage Intact and how to find things because they can just find it all on their dashboard. So I would learn all the different parts and how to navigate Sage Intact and then when you're comfortable, go in and create that dashboard. So I think that covers pretty much everything. Stuart, I don't know if there's any more questions that came in. 
Uh, I'm looking through them now. No, nope, everyone's saying thank you and um, uh, perfect. Um, so Shannon, thank you for putting this together. That was really great. Um, if there's any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out three different ways. One is you can always feel free to reach out to um, Shannon you or, or who did this presentation. Um, she, she's again, really good with dashboards. Um, the, um, you can always reach out to our support. Um, everyone on this call, our clients should have a support. Uh, we, through dashboards, that's great transition here through our, we have set up an ecosystem support dashboard on everyone's system that has a access to your portal that um, to ask questions, I mean, to submit cases. So feel free to use that, um, the dashboard that we set up on each one of your guys' systems, um, or three, just talk to your consultant if you're like in the implementation phases. Otherwise, I'm gonna say thank you very much for um, attending today and um, have a great day. Thank you again, Shannon. Thank you.